Adventures of Furry Man. As we begin today, we see that Louis the henchman from The Dog Who Knew Superman quit working for Hank and Joyce and went into the Witness Protection Program. That's right, the feds didn't set people up any better then than they do now. Oh, we'll give you a new life, new identity. Just don't expect to get any sleep. But where are these roses of yesteryear? Yes, where are the dandelions who ran so wild through the alleys of Metropolis? Or thought they did. The tough guys. The skunkweeds. The Larry McCoys. Larry McCoy? Why, the guy's talking about me. His real name was Billy Nelson, and he'll be back three more times in various roles. He sure has the look to play a cheap gangster. The guy on the radio is going on and on about how crime in this city is kaput thanks to Superman and low-life scum such as Larry McCoy are on the run and have left the city with their tails between their legs. Yes, here in Metropolis, crime is paying less and less. Larry McCoy and the others like him have gone on their last toboggan ride. They've run away for good. They're done for. And that's just one of the reasons why Metropolis Better Bank Bonds are a better investment for your money and... <laughs> Hey, I was listening to that. Now how am I going to find out about those bonds that'll make me rich? But the blinking neon sign and the guy on the radio aren't all that's keeping him awake. He's hearing the weirdest sound most any of us has ever heard. Why does that thing sound like a Model T that's trying to get up to speed? Well, isn't this a pleasure? Look, all them sounds. I'm a nervous type. They keep me awake. Hey, what is this thing? Mr. Kelso. Huh? Mr. Who? I get the feeling Larry has never heard that noise before. Does that mean this is the first time that guy has turned this thing on? Mr. Kelso is a computer. That word wasn't in common use yet because the average person had no idea such machines existed except in science fiction. Oh, they'd heard about this ENIAC thing at the University of Pennsylvania, but it had only been around for six years, and the idea of a machine that could actually think was the stuff of pulp writing. Who knew building one was so simple Ka the Snake could do it, and he doesn't even have hands. Oh, my mistake. That wasn't Ka, it was Winnie the Pooh. If you don't recognize Sterling Holloway, either by his crazy hair or by his unique voice, it makes me wonder who your jailer has been for the past 50 years and why they wouldn't even let you watch cartoons. Larry is kind of dismissing the whole thing until his brain registers what this guy just said. Mr. Kelso here is thinking about what? Well, you see, one of the boarders here who lives in the place also works as a night you watchman at the bank. You said something about time clocks and watchmen? Yes, you see, and he's trying to prove to the manager that he can't possibly be in all these given points. You also same... said something about safe combinations. Oh, safe combinations. They're a cinch for Mr. Kelso. Aren't they, Mr. Kelso? Larry says, he can do that? All you have to do is to give him the size of the rock, the number of falls, practically ten seconds to work it out, and you've got your safe combination. <laughs> Too bad we're not criminals, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, such a shame. Larry comes up with a hypothetical scenario for Mr. Kelso to play with. Let's suppose I'm in this bank Mr. Kelso mentioned. Oh, yes. I know, the one we have the combinations for. Yeah. Go ahead. And there's two cops on duty, but the closest is 50 feet from a call box. 50 feet, go ahead. Uh, of course, I'm just supposing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> But the burglar alarm rings when only one cop can hear it. And the nearest prowl car is three and a half blocks away at the time. Oh, oh, oh. You're making it too easy. Before he can even finish describing the setup, Mr. Kelso has the answer. What a strange way of putting it. Huh? It's how to rob the Metropolis Bank North Entrance. When a single alarm goes off and the patrol car is only three and one half blocks away, Hey, <laughs> the machine took it seriously. How about that? <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Kelso. No offense. Mr. Kelso spit out another strip of paper that said, Don't touch me, and that paper is mine. Give it back. When Larry refused, it coughed up another answer that said, Then I get 30%. And Larry said, Deal. 
Two weeks later, the professor realized what was going on. Larry and a henchman follow the instructions from the computer, rob the bank in broad daylight and get away clean. While Henderson is brainstorming with Clark and Lois about how these thieves could have timed everything so perfectly, right down to the traffic lights, a call comes in. The same thing just happened at another bank. This time Larry went in and his henchman, Nosy by name, stayed in the car. When a pedestrian asked Nosy why he was parked there, he told the man it was Mr. Kelso's car. Now we get a montage of what the newspapers are calling the Kelso robberies. Clark is sitting in his office reading one of those newspapers when his super hearing picks up a bank alarm. It's necessary. That door has a scanner on it that detects whether or not you have a hat on. No hat, no entry. I was going to say Superman is one thing Mr. Kelso can't predict, but I may have been mistaken about that. Nosy is angry about being left out of the loop. They're arguing in the room where Mr. Kelso is, and Nosy just said he's quitting. Quitting? Quitting what? So long, Uncle Oscar. You'll wise up yourself someday. But, gentlemen, gentlemen, what goes on around here anyway? You thought I was exaggerating about the two weeks thing. When Superman starts getting into the act, then count me out. It's time to quit. Come here. I want to show you something. Look, I ain't going to argue about Superman. I know how tough he can get. Of course he can. But then what have we done that Superman should want to stop us? Larry has been watching Uncle Oscar and knows how to operate Mr. Kelso. You ask him about Superman? Here, yeah. read the answer. It says, I won't tell. That would be cheating. In another montage, he keeps feeding information to Mr. Kelso about Superman, specifically how to keep him from interfering with Larry's plans. Nosy pulls another bank job, and the gang, which now includes a third member, are in the process of switching vehicles. Unfortunately for them, there are some things even Mr. Kelso can't predict. <laughs> Get out of the way! I thought you was being too optimistic. Your machine didn't have that one figured out. Well, perhaps we'd better walk at that. Cop car coming! Get that. Firing that first shot wasn't too bright. The police don't know they're the ones who robbed the bank, so if they had played it cool, maybe pretended their car wouldn't start, they wouldn't be in this mess. To make matters worse for them, Superman just arrived. Let's go. Yes, Superman just helped them escape. The question is why? Lois catches Clark with a note, and even though he tries to hide it, as quick as he leaves his office, she finds it. I might have guessed the one thing they could tell him that might worry him. Let me see. Sorry, Jim. Clark Kent isn't going to have this story all to himself. Oh, Miss Lane, please. All right. Someone wrote the Daily Planet. They know Superman's identity, and they're threatening to tell the whole world. You're telling me nobody's thought of making that threat before? In a real world, he'd be getting half a dozen threats like that every month. Every one just as phony as this one. Clark locates the place where the bad guys stash their vehicle and stakes the place out. Lois has been following, but doesn't feel like standing around. Let me go! Oh, one big happy family. Larry comes over. Lois keeps asking Clark why he doesn't do something. Uh, Nosy is pointing a gun at this chest, and it's safe to assume it's loaded. It's all right. We'll be leaving. Clark, what's the matter with you? Yeah, stand still. I know all about you, and I don't want any trouble. You know all about me? That's right. Your name is Clark Kent, and you're one of those nuisance reporters. I'm what? <laughs> What's so funny? What's funny is you're bluffing about Superman, and now he knows it. His hands are no longer tied. <sighs>
I stand corrected. They load everyone onto the truck and take off. Lois is in the front with Nosy, while Clark is in the back with Larry. Someone else is in the kitchen with Dinah. Clark finally figures out that it's a machine doing all these calculations for Larry. He says, what if the police get hold of it and use it to catch you? Larry says, I've got that covered. One minute, there ain't going to be no more, Mr. Kelso. What? You hide me, and no one can ask you to squawk either. I got a guy named Pinky that's taking care of him down at the house. He's got a sidekick named Brain who likes to try and take credit for all the work. The same way you're going to be taken care of. Hey, look. Huh? In the cab there. Where? See, look. He pushed him back onto a soft pile of money. How did that knock him out? Guess he don't want to scare you. Well, don't worry, miss. The boss ain't going to hurt your boyfriend. Much. Okay, it didn't. That whole sequence was the two of them fighting, even though Clark has super strength and guys who punch him end up with their hand in a cast. My suspension of disbelief just dropped to about 0.27. I was expecting Clark to grab Larry by the back of the head and thump his forehead against the wall. Quicker, more effective, less strenuous. <laughs> Somebody call the city about that pothole. Now, watch this next sequence and tell me what's unusual about it. No, it's not the fact that Pinky doesn't have the good sense to run away from his own bomb. What's unusual about it? Not a word was spoken. Everything in the scene spoke for itself. Even the music wasn't strictly necessary. But hey, musicians have to eat too, you know. Superman gives Uncle Oscar the gun and says, keep an eye on him until the police get here. I have to get back to the truck. Uncle Oscar says, no you don't. Unfortunately, like most scientific types, he has trouble getting around to the point and Superman won't wait any longer. Look, Superman! Shut up! But you're wrong! It can't be! The schedule said six blocks and I turned when I got there! I don't care about your schedule. All I care about is that. Read it and weep. According to Uncle Oscar, Mr. Kelso finally got wise to what Larry was doing, and that was how he put a stop to it. Do you suppose I could ask Mr. Kelso how you got out of the back of that truck? But Lois, I've told you again and again. Superman smashed a hole in that truck, and I went through it, and that's the absolute truth. He has yet to explain why the side of the truck is broken outwards. Look, Uncle Oscar, if I tell Mr. Kelso all I know about Superman, do you suppose he could actually figure who he is? Oh, I don't know about that. Superman might not like it. Besides, he might turn out to be someone very dull, like... Uh... Oh, never mind. Don't you strain yourself thinking of something dull. After they leave, Uncle Oscar can't resist. He pushes some buttons, picks up the microphone that we haven't seen anybody use before. They always use the typewriter interface. And asks Mr. Kelso, who is Superman? The good news is, there's no way he'd use the knowledge as leverage over Superman the way Larry did. <laughs> Mr. Kelso says, quote, wouldn't you like to know, unquote. The better news is Mr. Kelso won't give him the chance. Thanks for watching, kids. And remember, clicking that like button is cool. Subscribing is even cooler. Leaving a comment is as cool as the coolest person you know. And becoming a patron makes you almost just like Superman. So don't hesitate. Do it today. Until next time.